2018 iPad Pro has been my go-to for years. It's met all my needs for drawing, writing, note-taking, the occasional Disney Plus, and regardless of how amazing all the new features are, I just never found a good enough reason to upgrade. But recently, I've been using the M4 iPad Pro, and this is on a whole other level. Let's dive into what makes this upgrade so compelling. If you're new here, my name is Mindy and I love sharing all this cool stuff about Apple and on this channel, we do reviews and comparisons to help you find the best device for you. First off, let's talk specs. Six years later, it's no surprise that the upgrades are impressive. We've got an improved M4 chip, a beautiful OLED display, an upgraded FaceTime camera, Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, and somehow this got lighter, thinner, all while packing in more power than this 2018 iPad, which is perfect for power users. The ability to connect this to an external display is a game changer for people who are working on the iPad for long hours, running email scripts, editing videos. Now, the 2018 model did allow for this, but the software support really sucked, resulting in annoying black bars at the side of my 27 inch screen. However, with the M4 iPad, UI has improved so much. Now you can make full use of that whole 27 inch screen. No more black bars. It's a much better viewing experience. I love being able to switch between using the iPad for drawing and then docking it and switching it to a laptop like setup with a mouse, a trackpad, a keyboard, and then even docking it to a second display. That whole setup is so effortless, so easy. You only need to connect to the display with a USB-C cable, then enable stage manager mode in the settings. And ta-da, it functions very, very similar to a laptop monitor setup. You can even have multiple windows open, move them from the iPad to the monitors, and even adjust the size of windows. You just cannot do that on the 2018 iPad Pro. However, I have to say, this is still not as fluid as using a Mac or a PC. Like on the Mac, the cursor is super accurate. When I drag the window to a certain size, it stays there. But on the iPad, the cursor just doesn't listen to me as much. When I drag the size of a window to a certain point, it might just bounce back to another point of the screen. So it just doesn't feel as flexible and as fluid as a Mac. And that is just one thing that has not changed from the 2018 iPad Pro. Next, the new Magic Keyboard. Now, typing on this feels great as per usual. I think typing on any Apple keyboard always feels nice. This is also very sturdy. Even when I place this on my lap at the couch, it doesn't move. No complaints on the new trackpad. Very nice to touch, very smooth to use. But coming from a MacBook Pro trackpad or a trackpad like this, this now feels very, very tiny. Moving on to the new function row. This is amazing. I found myself using the brightness control so much whenever I'm working on the iPad so that the brightness of the screen is just nice for me. I just love this function row and with this, it wipes out all its composition and yes, I'm referring to the Logitech combo keyboard right here. Now, this used to be the only alternative with function row keys. This is how, how it sounds like when I type on it. It feels all right to type on it, but typing on the Apple Magic Keyboard just feels a little bit better, a little bit nicer. It's a much nicer experience overall. I love the look and feel of this case and how easy it is to detach from the keyboard and use this individually. But I did not like how much this case relies on the kickstand. When you open it like that, it doesn't just stand you have to open up this kickstand for it to stand. For the Magic Keyboard, you open it and it stands. Nothing else for you to do. It just works. And because of how this is being built, whenever I put it on top of my lap to type, it just isn't quite as stable as the Magic Keyboard. It will take you some adjusting and getting used to. Next, the Apple Pencil Pro. This makes the M4 iPad Pro a delight to work on. The hover feature is very intuitive, having like a little sneak peek of your brush before you even touch the iPad is very nice. It's gonna save artists so much time, they can actually get an idea of what the brush will look like without having to draw and erase. Procreate update needs to catch up for this one, but I can already imagine how awesome it will be. 
I've also been testing out the barrel roll and squeeze on free form and it's been super fun. Barrel roll makes the Apple Pencil super duper realistic. Twisting this pencil actually changes the angle of the brush, the pen, or the highlighter. Squeezing has been a game changer for reaching my tools faster. Instead of going all the way at the edge of the screen, squeeze here, it's here. Squeeze here, it's here. Great for the 11 inch and amazing for the bigger 13 inch. This also comes with haptic feedback. It feels like a vibration. Okay, no, more like pressing a button. But when I first started using this, there was so much haptic feedback going on that it was kind of overwhelming to use this. When you squeeze it, haptic feedback. When you double tap it, haptic feedback again. So it was a lot, but I did get used to it in the end. I have to say though, without this, I don't think this setup would be as exciting. Next, we obviously need to talk about the display. This is a whole new tandem OLED display and still featuring the fan favorite 120 Hertz ProMotion display. So incredibly smooth. Watching blockbuster movies like Doctor Strange on this has been such a treat. And if you actually pause at this particular moment and compare the 2018 iPad to the M4 iPad, you can really tell the difference. With the M4 iPad, you get those deep true blacks. There's way more contrast and the colors pop. But if you're watching this without pausing and pixel peeping, you can't really tell the difference. Another change I noticed was the volume controls. Now, on this M4 iPad, the volume controls actually flip when you switch it to landscape mode. In portrait mode, the top button is for increasing the volume, and the bottom button is for decreasing the volume. But when you flip it to horizontal mode, the top button is for lowering the volume, and the bottom button is for increasing the volume. It is more intuitive in a sense, especially for people who are using it in horizontal mode most of the time. Next, cameras. I'm actually loving this ultra wide lens on the front camera for the M4 iPad. So much nicer for FaceTime. As for the back camera here, I still find it weird holding the iPad and using it to take casual photos. It's just not my thing. But it is handy to have a better lens and a better software if we need to scan any documents. And finally, the most important question, to upgrade or not? Well, if you are a power user for iPads, it's your daily driver. Maybe you're a tattoo artist, a uni student, a business owner who needs to take their computer on the go, then I'd say go for this. You will absolutely love the M4 upgrade, especially when paired with the Magic Keyboard and the new Apple Pencil Pro. This entire setup is so worth it. I just want to get this. Plus, the new M4 iPad Pro is noticeably lighter. You can actually feel the difference between this and the 2018 iPad. Whenever I go back to using the older iPad, I always miss this weight. For me, after much thought and also after waiting eagerly for the latest WWDC iPad OS update, I still wasn't convinced to upgrade to the M4 iPad. There's two reasons for that. First, the iPad interface still hasn't changed as much. Using this still doesn't feel quite as smooth, as flexible as using a Mac. Number two, iPad is still just an iPad for me. The hardware is super powerful, but the software is just lacking. And yes, there's gonna be new features for the upcoming iPad OS, like the calculator feature in Notes, and those shiny new AI features which, let's be honest, is a big cheat for any secondary school student. Apple also made the AI perks exclusive to the M series iPads. It's basically saying, upgrade or miss out. And even then, it's still not enough to convince me to upgrade to this. Even with this new iPad Pro, I still use it the same way as how I would use the 2018 iPad Pro. The iPad is for drawing, note-taking, sketching ideas, while my MacBook Pro is my ride or die. All my favorite productivity apps are there and I edit there too. I work on it. And the Apple ecosystem is just so seamless that whatever I doodle on the iPad shows up on my Mac instantly. I can copy a picture on my Mac and then paste it on my iPad. It's like magic. And the very cool thing is my current 2018 iPad Pro already does 
all of that. I love it and I'm just not super thrilled about spending two grand on the M4 iPad Pro just to get better features and still use it the same way as I do on my 2018 iPad. But for now, I'm just keeping a very close eye to see if those new AI features will make this iPad Pro a game changer. What about you? Are you going to be upgrading to the M4 iPad Pro? It would be super cool if you could use the affiliate links below. It will help support the channel and you get yourself a nice little present. If you enjoyed this video, you would definitely love this one right here where we unbox all the new iPads. Take care, stay minty and cheery. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!